Phillips uh, 50 PF 5532D forward slash 05. Uh, the only symptoms I have is it's dead and the light on the front uh, turns to blue and then back, turns back to red and flashes. I'll just show you that now. Um, it's a plasma. Um, I'll just zoom in the light. see it's flashing away now turns to blue it might come up for the screen might come up for uh, about one two seconds and then it shut down and the red light will flash so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the back I'm not going to show the the, the procedure for taking off the back it would make for a very long video so I will um, reposition the uh, the uh, unit and take the back off and uh, we'll start again Okay, I have to back off now, and uh, what I see is, uh, from just a visual inspection, is there's about five, six capacitors bulging um, on the power supply. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to replace these. I'll just get a close-up of them. Okay, try and focus that. As you can see, there's a line of them there, and then there is another one, if I can just reposition, uh, it is right behind, right beside this transformer here, and it's down here, That's another, there's another one down here, it's uh, bulging as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take them out and uh, replace them and uh, see how the repair goes. I've taken out the power supply just to give you a better view of the, the power supply. Um, and I just you can see all the caps now that are uh, bulging. This is the one here. This is your standby uh, transformer. That's your standby voltage. Then you have a, if one, two, three, four on that side of the heat sink and this one here is looking a bit stressed. It doesn't look very like bulging but it's good. it looks like it got very hot. So I'll have to replace that as well. Um, I'm going to do that now. Uh, I'm going to start removing the uh, capacitors now. What I normally do is before I start uh, unsoldering is I normally um, freshen up the solder with a bit of fresh solder. Uh, this makes the, uh, the solder come off a little bit easier. So I'm just going to do um, the first capacitor, uh, which is in the standby power supply, and uh, I'm going to remove that now. It's uh, reference number DC8013, and it's a 1000 UF 16 volt. Yeah. Just going to zoom in there. You can use standard solder wick, uh, but this makes it just a little bit easier for me. UF 16 volt high temperature, of course. Yeah, we're going to remove these ones here. I'm going to freshen them up first. A bit of fresh solder.
that out by itself. Okay. And as you can see there, all the solder holes are cleared out of solder. Now it just remains to take the capacitors out. So, They're 680 UF uh, 50 volt and um, I would imagine they're all the same value. Let's have a look. Yes. And 680 50 volts. Yeah. Um, the circuit reference numbers for them are uh, DC8524, DC8407, DC8404, DC8405, DC8209. They're all 60. Uh, sorry, uh, 680 UF, um, uh, 50 volts, and they're a high temperature, 105 degree uh, capacitor. Uh, I'm going to get uh, some new ones out. I have the capacitors here now, I'm going to uh, uh, solder them into the PCB. Capacitors are polarized. You have to make sure you put them in with the correct polarity. Um, if you put them in incorrectly, they will blow. And also, you must remember these PCBs contain high voltages. Um, there is a reservoir capacitor and uh, it's in this area um, and if you see this isolation line here on the right hand side of that is live you would have a, a capacitor there on that side that would store a charge um, let me see if I can get it into your view Uh, this one here yeah, sorry. You got a pin here and a pin there and you've got another one over here they're the two main ones uh, if you put your hand across that there's probably about 385 volts on it here in uh, Europe uh, we have a mains frequency of our mains voltage of 240 volts um, and uh, it can give you a nasty burn. Now I've just got to clip uh, the leads short on the uh, capacitors I just put in. I'm just going to give it a small clean with a bit of uh, PCB cleaner. Clean as it looks. Let's do this left behind from the solder. and tight because there is earth connections on the screws. There's a tree down along this side. Uh, I don't 
see much problems with this particular unit. The only thing I ever had was uh, them capacitors go. Uh, maybe it's where I live. I, there's not many sold, but uh, it's the only problem I've had with them. Uh, maybe there's other people out there that have other faults with them that could uh, make a video even or uh, respond. Let me know. Now, connect it for the VS board. Your ends voltage in. Uh, supplies and signals to your uh, control board. And these are connectors to the main signal board. And of course, not forget our X or a Z so, uh, sustain board. What we'll do now is we're going to reposition the TV and uh, do a switch on and see what happens. Um, the capacitors I have here, they're slightly larger than the ones I took out, um, but they fit. After unit reposition now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press the uh, power on button on the uh, remote control. Uh, Light turns to blue, picture comes up, and we have a signal. And let me see, we got sound. Yes, we have sound. Uh, just pause that. Um, that's, uh, that's the repair complete. Um, I'll get back to you with more videos. Uh, thanks uh, for watching. The large capacitor that uh, was stressed and uh, overheated, I did take it out and I checked it and uh, its ESR rating was uh, correct and uh, I have to assume from uh, uh, the position of the capacitors with the bulging um, and the large capacitor that the heat was rising from the four uh, bulging capacitors and it was uh, that that was uh, melting the plastic around the large capacitor. Uh, I couldn't find nothing wrong with the capacitor, so I did not have to replace it. Um, I thought I'd better mention this 